Hi guys, welcome back. Yesterday I promised you guys something special today. And I'm going to do something I've never done. And that is to upload a full process, real-time video of me doing a picture. You might wonder why I'm doing this. Well, I've had enough comments from people asking me. And I think at this point it's really important because a lot of... YouTube videos out there, basically from every single YouTuber that uploads uh, drawing pictures, don't really do justice to the process. And what do I mean by the process? Well, a long time ago, towards the beginning of my channel, I talked about style and how people need to develop their own style. Now, what I mean by style would be... Um, the colors that you use, your hand, how heavy and how light your hand is, how much you um, how much you blend, how many pencils you blend into each other, and how comfortable you are. Developing your own style would also involve uh, your taste in pictures that you would do, the textures that you put on the page. If you look at some of the people who do art on here and you're able to look at a picture with, without even watching a video along with it and pick out that's this person's picture, that's this person's picture. And you know, just by looking at the picture, who did that picture, that's style. You don't, you don't need any great education to be able to pick out a Picasso. It's a unique style. Well, developing a style is very important, but also developing a process is equally as important. And what do I mean by process? Well, when I do my pictures, the end result usually comes out along the same line. They look good, they're bright, I do my pictures almost in the same way, and that's why I'm always looking for something different to do. Now, a lot of artists, they'll go to different mediums, but I'm very happy with pencils, and I'm not looking to add, you know, go into the watercolors or use markers. I can't even use markers where I live. They, they don't last here very long. So... I'm always looking for a new process to try. And what do I mean by process? It's the way I do a picture. How do I start? How do I do the middle? How do I develop the picture? And the most important part is how do I do the ending? And what you get in a lot of videos is six hours of artwork that you don't see behind the scenes. It needs to be cut out. It's too long. YouTube doesn't even allow you to put that big of a video. Or do I expect somebody to sit there and watch me color in a flower for four hours? It's it's just a very hard thing to do. So a lot of people do not see the entire process. Not on, only on me, but other artists. So I've decided to show you the process, and it's going to be a long one. I've got five or six videos to show you, and they're all over an hour long. So we're either going to get to know each other really well, or you're going to fall asleep a lot. <laughs> we'll click off. So I'm going to begin now with talking about how I picked this picture and and why it suits me. Well, when I first look in any book and I decide that there is a picture that I want to do, the picture has to tell me a story. Now, this picture to me I'm looking at, and it could be a night picture, it could be a day picture. Does that butterfly live inside that house, or is there a little fairy that um, or an elf that lives in that house and the butterfly is curious. This picture had to tell me something. So when I was looking at it, I was seeing myself, well, 
you know, it's sort of like a dawn picture to me. Maybe the butterfly is just getting up and the lights are still very dim. And that's kind of how I felt. So all of a sudden I've got this feeling. And because I have this feeling, I'm starting to see colors. I'm starting to see where the end picture is going to lay down. After that, I start picking my palette. Now, I knew when I looked at this picture that there was enough going on in it that I was going to use just every pencil in the box. Um, that's, that's just, there is enough going on on this picture that I can. But also, you got to remember, you have to develop this without creating mud. And you still have to keep to all the rules that I've been teaching you in my blending course about not creating and how not to create that mud. So as you can see that I started with the flowers. I don't know if you're realizing it, but there was about 12 different colors that went into doing these flowers. And how I begin with these flowers is from the bottom up. I'm not seeing that the flowers are going to end up blue. I'm seeing that the flowers are going to end up closer to a purple color and darker and I also wanted to bring in a little bit of green into them but I started with blue and that's because I'm working from the bottom coming up every layer that I put down and there was a lot of layers on these flowers every layer is going to build and form shading in different areas and it might not seem that it's going to happen at the beginning, but it does happen. I'm also thinking about my light source. Now, I've already decided which side my light was going to come in at, and sometimes you can't tell from the bottom which way my light is going to go because there's going to be darker colors going on on the very top. So right now, it kind of looks like it's a frontal um, view where the light is coming in from the front and later on you're going to see the light is going to definitely take on a direction once I get my shadows in there. Now I'm using indigo blue right now. That's the darkest I'm going to take these flowers and then I'm going to stop and the reason I'm going to stop is that I want to develop the rest of the picture before I set the total tone, like what time of day is this, isn't going to come out till the end. Now, some artists have the ability to pick, say, the mushrooms and start working on the mushrooms. I'm going to use uh, Chris Chang. She has the ability to work on one area and one area only, develop that one area, and then move on to the next. And when she is done with that area, she moves on to the next. I, I applaud that. It's a different way of, it's a different process than the way I do it. What I like to do is I like to get color on my entire page from the bottom working upward so that I don't really know what's going to be on the top until the very end. I may change a color completely from the time that it's from the bottom to the top, and that's my process. I do my pictures in the same exact way every time. Now, I'm gonna be adding some white into this picture. Once you add in some white, which is nice because it'll always keep that area a little lighter. Even when you put a darker color over it, it's never going to be as dark as if you started dark. It's a little bit harder to be able to see an end, but I'm always thinking throughout this entire picture, what is it going to look like at the very end? Roughly 10, 11 minutes into this video, and I've only done the flowers. This video ended up being, I think, eight to 10 hours long. I cut out a couple of hours worth just because it was too long. 
So, and I wanted to keep to the process. I'm not that worried about you guys seeing every color layer. We'll handle the, the color blending in my color blending tutorials. You have to keep in mind, this is a process video. Okay, so you can see me lightening up some of the colors with the white here. And then I believe, if I'm thinking back straight, I may have started in with some of the green over the, the blue. Every detail, there's another layer of indigo going in there right now. It's weird for me to be watching back right now on what I'm doing, because when I was making this video, I was sitting there watching television, and I was actually talking on um, the phone, not even thinking about the pictures. It was almost like I was automatically just, my hands were going and my mouth was going at the very same time. By the time I turned around, the, the flowers were done. Okay, now we stop. Here comes the green. I'm starting with the lime peel. And I really like that color combination with the light blues. And then you do a layer of lime peel over it. It brings out something in the greens. It's a real, I can't wait to get to uh, the lime peel color when we're going through it. Because I do so many different things with lime peel. It's always like one of the shortest pencils in my box. And one of the pencils that I have to go out and actually buy more of. That's another thing. You can always tell the pencils that people use the most when they're the shortest in the box. And it's good to keep in mind that every once in a while, take a look at your pencils and see what you're using the most. And then don't use them. Try doing a picture with the pencils that you have the most of, the biggest pencils in the box, because you're almost like putting yourself into one color category and you are not exploring other possibilities. That's why doing the color blending system, it's going to force you out of that um, hole. If you find yourself that that's what happens to you. You find yourself that your pictures are looking the same. I remember at the beginning, um, I had a comment from somebody actually I knew. His name was Mid. And he said, you're a really good artist, but why does everything look yellow? And then I looked at some of the pictures that I had uploaded, and he was right. Everything looked yellow because I love canary yellow. And so after that, I had to purposefully stop myself from using the, the canary yellow. And for the next couple of videos, I actually put that pencil away and hid it so that I didn't just use it. And that really helps you break out of that habit of going back to the same old colors. And I know for new artists that are just getting to know the Prismacolor pencils and to know some of the other boxes... It's a very common thing. You see, here I go with my canary yellow. Speak of the devil. Can't have a picture without it. But as I was saying, a lot of people do pigeonhole themselves into using the same colors. So if you take a picture of every picture that you, you finish or you work on, because God knows I work on more pictures than I actually do finish, and you start seeing a on a page a color um, that is the same, do what I did and put it away. Explore other things. Every pencil is different. Every pencil does something unique. And it's really a lot of fun to discover what that pencil can do. A lot of pencils in the Prismacolor box are uh, tools. And what do I mean by tools? Okay, so look at gray. Gray is a gray color, and you use it for gray objects. But gray also tones things. It brings a hue or a color up and down. So it could be brighter or darker, but it stays along the same line. 
And that's the really great thing about the grays. I've had people comment, oh, they hardly ever use the grays. They don't know what to do with it. It's like probably the first thing that people start to get curious is what gray does. Like why is there so many different grays and how to use the different grays? And there definitely is a difference in the color and the way they look on the page. This is why I tell everybody that's at least new and haven't experimented with the grays to keep your, yourself sane and not having to worry which color goes with which because you can create mud very easily. I say the light warm colors go with warm gray and cool colors go with cool gray. Of course, you'll watch some of the more experienced artists and they're picking up all different types of grays all over the place. And that's because they know how far they can push that gray and with what colors that are around it that they can actually use that gray. Most artists, by the time that they're able to just comfortably do this, it's like driving a car. Um, new drivers, they are very mechanical about it. They make rights. They look for a couple more seconds. They... They hesitate, they stop, they go. Everybody was a new driver at the beginning. And then one day you've driven so many times that you get behind the wheel of a car and you can turn your music on, listen to music, and your hands and your mind just separate from each other. And your body drives and your mind can be thinking about whatever, your day, your the person you love, your kids. And that's kind of what happens with artists too. After a while, picking up pencils, you're going to be able to be talking on the phone or watching television and coloring at the same time. And your hands are going to start to reach for colors or what color is going to be next. And that's me all the time. What color am I going to, to use next? And I think we're getting into the green okras. And imagine this, I'm using green and then I'm bringing in mulberry over the uh, the blue. That's going to bring in a purplish hue, like a midnight purple. I do bring in some of the deeper purples, like the um, purple hue and dark purples into it. Now you realize that that blue and that green are just the bottom because now I'm completely changing up the color. And look how far into this picture. I probably cut out at least an hour of video from just doing the flowers. And I'm still just on the flowers. But my process is going and it's going well. I could see I added a little bit of gray in there. You might not notice it, but I'm starting to bring in the shadows also, these are things you'll never see. Please excuse the fingernails. Oh my God. It's um, weed season here in Las Vegas. And if you don't get the weeds before the ground becomes really hard, um, we had a very rainy uh, end of winter and we're going into a really beautiful spring right now so my weeds are all over the yard and i am determined to beat them and it's funny because i don't even have to do that by another month the weeds are gone and then it gets too hot here for the weeds to grow so but every year i do it anyway i go out and i weed my entire property and then it, it only has to be done once because nothing grows here it's the desert except for my cactus the weed cactus my good cactus i lost two plants my weed cactus i think grew like three feet over the winter it's crazy and yeah there is weed cactus for those who don't live in the desert there's a type of cactus that just it's ugly it's brown and one of my friends who used to live with us planted it in my yard and 
this is the year I am determined to get it out. I've tried to burn it out, but I've never tried getting it out in the spring when the ground is soft. So that's what we're working on now. So my hands are going to be tore up for the next couple of weeks, and I probably will not have any more nails. But they grow back really quickly. Oh, I had somebody in my, my last video ask me if my nails were real. And yes, they are. No, they don't break. Not very often. And yes, they grow really, really quick. Okay, so now my light blue flowers have turned dark blue and green. And the highlight is really starting to take shape. Okay, so I'm bringing in some Parma Violet. And look how tiny my pencil is. You can tell I like that color. Um, notice my strokes have changed now. And it's hard to tell that I'm lifting off the page. I'm not really coloring back and forth. It's kind of like the downstroke and I'm lifting up. You can see kind of now I'm circling and blending that in. What I'm doing is trying to just tint the highlight. I'm not trying to draw over it or compete with it. I just want to kind of have a very light tint on it. And I do that a lot with my highlights. So now I have to work my way through all of them. I've been really busy lately. I have a daughter who's getting married. Oh my God, in six weeks. I can't believe it. It's like surreal to me she's still my baby and she's getting married and she's not such a baby anymore she's in her upper 20s but so i've spent like the whole weekend going through all her baby pictures because i'm trying to put together like a package for her um as a surprise when she gets married um the day before like the weekend before she gets married, her best friends are flying into Vegas to, I guess, have a weekend, girls weekend, and they're staying here. Uh, the weekend that the weekend that she's getting married, um, her husband's going to go with his husband. Oh, my God. Her fiancé is going to go with his family that's flying in, and she's going to stay here with us so that they don't see each other for that, you know, the couple of days before the wedding. We're going to... Um, get out all the baby pictures and she's never seen her baby videos. Technology was changing so fast and rapidly back then that we kind of lost touch with technology we used to do her baby pictures. So we haven't really had anything to show them to her. So she's never seen them and she's 27 years old. I'm getting together this big package. So I got out my label maker so, does anybody here own a P-Touch? I am, like, obsessed with this thing. I own two, I call them my toys. I own a label maker, and I own a laminating machine. Both of them are so much fun. I label everything, and I'm talking everything. So, when I got out my baby pictures, I went and I got tons of the labels. My kids were, like, identical triplets when they were uh, little. And even though they were years apart from each other, my firstborn was really tiny, tiny, tiny. She grew in like the 10th percentile her whole entire life. And in fact, she's my smallest one now. And they're all, my, my girls are, are all not big. They, I, we don't grow big in our family. Her next sister was like four years younger than her. And then there was a two-year separation when we had the third girl. But at some point, they all look like they were like triplets. So I had to get out my label maker this week and label all their baby pictures. And the only way that I was able to even tell which one was who, and I'm a mother. You would think a mom would know, but they were so identical. And the funny thing is, is that they... My oldest one didn't grow fast. So 
I would pass the clothes down to the second born. And then the second born wasn't that far off than the third. So the pictures, they're wearing the same clothes. I have like one dress that I don't, I think was, they wore for like six years, like bouncing it down to each other. And so it's really hard. So I got out my label maker and I got out the tape. If you have a P-Touch like I do, you know it's, it's really expensive, the tape. But I found, and this I'm just passing on to people, I found this tape called Chappelle, C-H-I-P-H-E-L-L -L tape, and it fits in my P-Touch. It was so much cheaper. I'm doing all my baby pictures, and I have like thousands of them. My kids grew up in the era where you actually printed out your pictures. But uh, I'm labeling everything with my P-Touch. So uh, if you have a P-Touch, um, Chappelle is excellent tape, and it fits in the P-Touch. The TZ, and I'm looking at the package here, the TZ and the TZE for this tape. But I have two, and one of them is not a TZE. It's like the next or below it, or I don't know how they labeled them. And the tape happened to have fit in there also. I found the tape on Amazon. I haven't reviewed it yet on their um, Amazon channel or their Amazon account yet. And I may tell them that, you know, they might want to look into the fact that their, their tape fits in other machines too really well. It prints out just like the P-Touch tape that I was spending so much more money on. I mean, I think it was like for the amount of tapes that I was buying, I think I was buying the package for uh, 24 um, or more. And the same box I found on Amazon for 16 So, So, what was I saying? See, I told you after we're going to be doing this for six hours, we're going to get to know each other. <laughs> But I also have my laminator, which I am, like, obsessed with. Talk about satisfying as it, like, goes through really slowly the machine and then it comes out all shiny. Oh, the little things in life that make me happy. Okay, so finally I'm starting the leaves here. And I'm starting out with, I think that's spring green. Um... The leaves, I get. To, I remembering doing the leaves, not even having to look at the video. They are going to change throughout this entire video. The leaves I'm working on now are going to be light, and then they're going to take on a whole different look towards the end. And this is part of my process: is you never can tell at the beginning what something's going to look like at the end. I mean, even the flowers I'm not done with yet. And we saw how I'm just starting now uh, the leaves. And you could see the long strokes that I'm doing. And you can almost tell that my hand is doing it really lightly. And it's pulled back from the tip. So I'm going very lightly on it. Long, light strokes. Now, if you look, I'm lifting my hand up off the paper between the strokes going down. So they're really, the strokes are only going in one direction. Because I want to keep the color going in a band-like pattern. I'm not, I'm not doing circles there. And now I've moved on to, what is that? And you see how slow and methodical it is when I want to get each line. I worked on this late into the night. I was talking with some people. Yeah, that has to be... Oh no, I get a glimpse. That's a dark... Hmm. That may be a dark green. I'm trying to get a look at the 
Maybe the, my hand will move the pencil and I'll be able to tell the number. Oh, no, no. This is an olive green. I had started with the gray on that on the other side. And then I, this is a different pencil. This is an olive green. I mean, if anybody's following this to do a color along. I would have added in the pencils, but just consider it every pencil in the box. Yeah, that's definitely the olive green. So spring green, olive green. Oh, I'm sitting there watching it. I should put some music on. I think we have uh, the last half hour of this. This is the part of the video where you could just sit back and just chill. Go into the zone. Get out some coffee. And just watch blindly. So I'll put some music on for you guys. Something mellow. Because the leaves are going to take a little while. So I'll be back.
guys still awake? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so what have I been doing? I added, I added a lot of things since the music. Obviously, I'm working on the top. There was a lot of colors that went into the top. There's my eggshell. We just studied about that color. And look how different it is when I'm bringing out the other colors. The I think I used sienna on the top. And that's going to bring like a creaminess going down. And then later on over that, I'll put in uh, some texture into it and make it sort of like an, a light acorn color. Now you have a better idea of how long the videos are that I'm doing and why when people say, oh, why don't you do it in real time? How many hours does this take? And believe it, we are just at the beginning of this. I'm going to take you through this entire picture. You're going to be so sick of hearing me talk. You're going to be like, oh my God. I've been going through the music trying to pick out some nice things when you guys need a break from me. And just blending that down. Look how easy it blends down. I'm not even putting that much pressure on it. It's like a medium pressure just to get everything flowing. The last video that I'm going to do, I know at the very end there's going to be a lot of detail put in it. Even the tiniest things. Ooh, changed my mind. There comes the... Canary yellow. I think I put the canary yellow into it and then the bronze. It just helped with the blending. Because I put that pit, you know, that pencil down. It's weird for me to see me doing this in real time. A lot of the times, you know, I'll put it on hyperlapse. But I don't really do that in this video at all. I'm letting you see it all the long form. Yeah, I think I only do like 15 more minutes on this video, and then I go to the next. I've cut out at least two hours. Oh, on the leaves, they're not even done. I really get detailed into them, especially when I start putting in the shadows, and I'm able to like start bringing out some of the swirls. That yellow really gets bright all this time and I'm still not even on an upper level yet. I'm looking at the final picture now while I'm watching myself do this. A lot more layers to go on. You know, we talked about less expensive pencils. I were putting like mineral spirits on this now. I would lose a lot of the detail that go into it and that's what I love about the Prismacolor. And I say even to like the newest people, if you can just afford even like a small set, go for the 72. I really can't imagine having 72 colors. I have to look at what the 72 set has. I think Prism is going for $90 now. We're pretty much getting to the end of this video. I probably needed a break. I'm sure you guys do too. And I will be back hopefully tomorrow to do another one. I think we get into the main part of the house tomorrow. I'm pretty sure that's the, that's the next part. I hope this wasn't too torturous for you. I know it was a lot of fun for me to do. I've had, uh, I've wanted to do this for a long time. So, uh, we'll be doing, we'll be doing Deco Yellow. I think I'm going to do that in like two days, give us a break from this picture, and then do the deco yellow next. Can't get out of your studies. Take care, guys.